you know what I don't like most of all is those guys that I need to cover all the time. I mean, like they're placed in such an uncomfortable position. That's perfect. What if I tell you that the way you think, the way you perceive the entire world depends on the language that you speak? You may say that that is not entirely true, but in most cases it is. Imagine that the language is the mediator between the world of objects, of things, of everything that you can see, that you can touch, smell and so on, and the world of your consciousness, the way you perceive, the way you digest everything that you've just seen, heard and etc. Languages shape the collective consciousness, which means that if we speak one language, all people around speaking this language will be almost alike in the way that they think, in the way that they see this world. If you don't know how true it is, watch at the very end of this video where you can take a small but very interesting test. So first of all, the languages are viewed not as a collection of different words, but languages are viewed as different bodies, the bodies in which the culture, the perception, the worldview is reflected. And the existence of this idea of a separate language worldview is on the rise now. In fact, the way you think is determined by your language. Imagine the reality, the reality that you have right now, and you divide this reality along the lines of your language. I know that it sounds a bit confusing, but let me explain you. Look at the language as at the mirror. When you look in this mirror, you notice only those factors of reality which are meaningful for your language and for your culture, because the connection between the language and the culture is long determined. And these are two things which are intertwined. What do you think about time? Just Think for a second, what do you know about time? In my culture, and I'm a, not saying not only in the Russian language, but in all the Western languages as well, we tend to think that time is something priceless. And quite often we say, okay, I'm wasting my time, wasting my time, or in Russian, or we tend to say, time is money. For us, time is something like a materialized concept. When we think about the future, which is a very common notion, okay, when you think about the future, what do you think about it? Quite often we think that the future is something which is ahead of us, but you may be surprised to find out that in some other languages, people think that the future is something which is behind them. When we say behind us, we think about the past, but imagine that people speaking other languages, they may say the same thing. How do you think about the future as something ahead when it is behind you? That is the way of the division of reality along the lines of your language, the way you perceive one concept. And here I'm speaking about the concept of time. If you change the vision of the time, if it will change this simple, the simple notion of the time as future and past, and you will come in communicate with other people, they won't understand you because they perceive the world along the lines of their own language and you are supposed to perceive this world the same as they do because you speak this language, because in this language, in this reality, you see the world, you see the future as something which is in front of you, ahead of you. A specific language worldview existed all the time, from the very roots of the language to its development. That's why it's right to think that sometimes some concepts tend to change, there is the process of rethinking of the concepts. Let's take this very painful example of the concept of fire. If we think about the fire, and I may say that here you may see the differences in meanings, the fire still is the con concept of survival, for example, for our culture and for the worldview of the Western people. But when you think about the same things in the countries, in the languages, where people went through some of the catastrophes, like the present day catastrophe of the Australian bushfires, for them, there is the process of rethinking the concept. 
when they think about this concept and here I'm making some kind of an assumptions. For them, fire will be on the first place the destruction, the death, because of the recent events that are happening. That is the example of how one concept can undergo the process of the change due to these facts that are happening right now in their culture, which reflects the language and their language worldview. You may ask me, why do we think about the real things that are happening and the language which has no connection with this reality? In your languages, this object will have different words, different sounds, the combination of letters. When we see, we immediately connect it to all those letters that we have in our mind. These tragedies, the catastrophes, are some of the brightest examples of the rethinking of some of the concepts. But also we have to think about the developments in arts, in technology. When we look at the countries which are trendsetters, the creators of this technology, we may notice such a process of adopting their own notions to our language. It's hard to make up a word for the concept that didn't exist in our culture. That's why there are so many universal notions. Let's also take the universal concept of fate. When you hear this word, fate, what do you think about in your language? We have the same word in Russian, sudba. The fate is perceived as a kind of a luck. When you are destined for something, I mean like you're lucky, it's something positive, but in our culture, fate is a negative notion for us. The fate is something bad that you are destined for. When something bad happens in your life, you think, okay, that's fate. I'm destined for this. I may be kind of accursed, and that's my fate. The curse is my fate. So here you may see one notion you entirely contrasting ideas and perception of one notion. By the way, what do you think about fate? Comment down below, I'm really curious, because that is the example of the English culture, the general Western culture, though maybe if we count every single country, it might be different. And this concept in the Russian, the Belarusian culture. How is this difference in the language worldview is connected with the learning languages? I think that you are quite curious about this. You may have heard that people who know several languages, they know several worlds. It means that they know several worldviews just because they know this language. Because when you master the language, you master a certain sum of knowledge that this language gives you, the community, the society that speaks this language, transmit this knowledge to you when you learn their language and adopt in their worldview as well. Because quite often when I started learning languages, I was so shocked at the way that they perceived some of the universal notions. Even take the example of the presence of the article in different languages. In the Russian language, we don't have this concept. Like, that is the biggest struggle for everyone who is learning the English language here. Because we don't understand, why do you need articles? The same with all other languages. When you start learning languages, when you start decoding it, you realize that the way they see the world is entirely different. And sometimes you cannot accept it. You continue rejecting it and you continue to pile up all these difficulties in your head. Is it possible to say that we have us different language mentalities? Yes, it is. We do have. But I'd like to state the point that I'm not speaking here about totally different understandings of how this world works. Imagine that there is one key understanding one key perception of this world which is installed in all the humanity but there are different versions of this perception to be able to read the world from different points of view and to be more versatile thanks to this think about the languages that are dying out if we perceive the language as a separate universe every single language that dies with the last uses for whom this language is their mother tongue, singles out that another separate universe is falling apart. Like, we take it for granted, even the concept of time. But when we immediately find out that there are people who think not the same way, we somehow will look at the concept of time as a kind of a three diversion. Just this knowledge that there are people who think differently, who think that future is behind us, adds 
another spice to this concept, the spice you've never thought of. Maybe that's the reason why I started learning the languages, which are not dying out, definitely, but which are not so widespread, which are not in the top list of the languages spoken in this world. On to the test that I've decided to conduct. I think it's going to be quite an interesting idea in order to show how different our realities are. I'm going to ask you to think about four things. And here it's important to think just not over five seconds. Don't intentionally think about it. Just the first notion that pops up, write it down the country. So first, think about any tree. Write down any tree. Write down any bird. Write down any animal. Write down any book. And when you write down all these four things, also state the country you are from, because that's going to be more interesting. And my answers you can check down below in the comment section. Probably it won't show some really radical differences. It will show immediately the connection between the people who speak one and the same language. Remember, language is the combination of the culture and the reality that you live in. Thanks for watching, give a thumbs up and see you soon. Bye!